Hey, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. I wanted to sit down and chat with you guys about something that is new pretty much since COVID, a little bit before then, but it's the ability to take official examinations, piano examinations online, entirely online, not needing to go to some kind of institution or school or, or thing like that in order to take an exam, which I think has the potential to be just of extraordinary benefit to a variety of different piano students around the world. So what this is, is the MTB, the Music Teachers Board. And I want to spend this video discussing how it works with you guys in depth, how you would go about preparing for examinations with them, how the process works, if I think it's worth it, which generally I, I do. I mean, anything that allows you to expand your options in terms of assessment and test taking and things like that, anything that increases the access and affordability of doing that, I think is a major win in my book. So just starting this off, you already know my opinion, but I wanna spend the rest of this video detailing how it works and giving you some suggestions if you want to go through this process. So let's get started. The Music Teachers Board is relatively new and in 2019, um, they were qualified by Ofqual, probably butchered the pronunciation there. It's an English board, uh, which allows for accredited examinations. There are 1,500 examination centers, physical locations that are open across 50 countries. So they do have a physical pre presence, but our interest, I think for the most part, is the online examination aspect. The idea with an MTB exam is that you can take an exam from the comfort of your own home without all of the stress that showing up to an examination center produces. Anyone who's taken an RCM or AB or SM exam can attest to all of the nerves that come with playing on an entirely different piano, being having like someone sit in the room judging you basically, it can be a really intense experience. And I think for a lot of people um, who might not want to take exams because of that particular pressure, this might provide a really nice solution because it reduces a lot of the anxiety. It also reduces travel costs because not everyone lives in an area where you're able to go to an exam center. Um, a lot of people have to travel to a different city, even a different um, country. For those of you who live in Europe, I mean, I've heard stories of people um, going to the neighboring country in order to take an examination, which when the neighboring country is close by, it's not quite, uh, like it's, it's not quite as big of a deal as maybe it sounds like, but it's still a lot of effort and travel time that you could potentially be saving on as well. One other thing that's really cool about them is that you can take an exam at any time. You can submit your examination recordings and expect to hear back within a six-ish week window. And this is in contrast to traditional exam boards, which by their nature are at set times per year, where usually there's two to three periods in the year, um, just like two or three week windows, where you're gonna be taking your examination and that's it. So if it's March, um, maybe for you the next examination isn't available until say August or September. Um, so oftentimes you have to plan and do a lot of waiting and um, making sure you're orienting your learning around these, these schedules if examinations are important to you. But with MTB, you can just submit when you're ready and then keep moving forward. So let's talk about how these exams work. There's uh, a lot to get into, but the basic idea is that you, um, you pick a few pieces of music from their syllabus, you record yourself in one entirely unedited string, so you're not allowed to like uh, cut up your video or anything, it has to be replicating a real life performance as much as possible. And then you submit it to them. Um, they prefer if you do it via their app, but you can also do it on the desktop website as well. We will talk a little bit more about the syllabus and piece selections later because this is another thing that I think is pretty cool about them. Um, it's Here's where we need to make a really important distinction. You can do either practical grades or performance grades. And they're, one is much more of a traditional model and one is much more of an almost like real world, uh, real world model. So the practical grades is uh, you do a few pieces, but you also do some predetermined technique, sight reading, ear training. This is how ABRSM and RCM exams work as well as others like Trinity and AMEP. So very like standard model to demonstrate that you've mastered a wide variety of piano skills. Because ultimately, if you're just playing pieces, you're not necessarily demonstrating that you've developed your ear. Like, can you identify major and minor intervals? Um, you're not necessarily demonstrating if you can sight read. I mean, maybe you had to just like, grind out the memorization of the pieces you learned or something like that. 
So this is why these are, I, I don't want to make it sound like the kind of old school method of piano examinations is problematic because there's a reason it exists like this. It's to have a multifactorial test of someone's abilities. But there's also the option for doing performance grades, which I think is kind of a cool solution. It's, a, it's not really a solution, it's more of an alternative, um, a real world alternative. Because if you're a, a piano performer, in any capacity, even if you're just an amateur who enjoys playing in front of friends and family sometimes, the whole process for you, and, and this extends to professional performers as well, is often just selecting repertoire. How do you create a balanced repertoire? What pieces do you choose? How long is your set going to be? Uh, and there's a lot of considerations that go into the performance aspect of it, such as how do you dress and do you talk and what kind of program do you make? So this is what you would do with a performance grade that you would submit to MTB. You would do a longer set of pieces, probably around four or five pieces, no technique, nothing else. It's just one completely unedited performance. And they give you time suggestions. They want you to create a diversity of repertoire, but in like an allotted span of time. It's not strict either, but that's more of like kind of the real world option. And you're expected to show that you know a wide variety of techniques and you've tried a lot of different musical styles by creating a really balanced repertoire, which can be kind of challenging. But it's a really, really cool option that I think uh, nicely balances the more traditional model. One really cool thing about the traditional aspects, the practical grades that MTB does is everything is predetermined. So for example, when you show up for an ABRSM exam, you're going to be given some sight reading example. You have no idea what to expect. It isn't a punk something in front of you and you're going to have to figure it out. Um, that's true of RCM and, and it's a little bit stressful. It's kind of fun. It just depends if you think that kind of thing is fun. Just being given like spontaneous ear training exercises on the fly. Um, I think that's kind of fun. But what MTB, MTB does is they give you um, basically like everything is given to you in advance. You um, prepare the, the ear training components and everything like that. They tell you exactly what's expected. Um, you're given a very specific set of technical requirements that are expected and so on. So there's zero surprises in the exam situation. Okay, so let's talk about the exams for the practical grades. Remember, the practical grades are the more traditional type of examinations. There are two preparatory levels just like the Royal Conservatory of Music, and then it goes from grade one to eight. And there are actually diploma levels past that, but this is like kind of the, the body of it. Unlike the Royal Conservatory of Music, they don't have their, their um, performance selections, their syllabus divided into different categories like list A or B or C um, pieces to choose from. You, you basically select from one big list as a giant free-for-all. Um, Basically, they all require three performance pieces, whether you're at a prep A level or a grade eight level. Just the um, distribution of points changes a little bit because I think it's around grade two um, or grade one where you're adding um, sight reading and ear training, which don't exist in the prep grades. Um, in prep A and B, you're expected to prepare technical exercises alongside your pieces, but you're not expected to have like a like an ear training and sight reading component. In terms of equivalency, it seems to me that it's, it tracks pretty closely with the ABRSM. So grades one through eight in MTB, I think tracks pretty closely with grades one through eight in the ABRSM. And it's a little bit different with the RCM. So grade five in the MTB might be more like grade six or seven RCM. Uh, so for example, a couple pieces at the MTB five level would be Fear Release or Chopin's Prelude in E minor. I'll give you some famous examples of pieces to hopefully give you context for these levels. MTB is grade six. I think it's more like seven or eight RCM. Uh, there's a Bach convention. Uh, I. Giorni is a piece that a lot of people know, which would be at the grade six level. Grade seven MTB is roughly equivalent with RCM eight or nine. Some pieces at this grade level includes uh, Debussy's uh, Reverie and Mozart's Alaturka. And then finally, MTB's grade eight features some Bach prelude and fugues, which are typically RCM grade nine and 10 levels. Um, you also will find Schubert Impromptu, Chopin's Waltz in C-sharp minor, Raindrop Prelude, um, Claire de Lune by Debussy. Some of the really big pieces are gonna be found at the grade eight level. So let's talk about one really cool thing about MTB's syllabus. It's the idea of free choice pieces. 
they allow you to choose any three pieces you want and it doesn't have to be on their syllabus. That's the whole idea. Now, they strongly recommend when you're reading through their pages and you can check my blog post um, link down below because I, I have links to all this stuff if you want to explore this in more depth. But they basically say that if it tracks with a already um, accredited institution, so I would assume that means something like the ABRSM or RCM, you can uh, essentially like choose pieces from those syllabi instead, which allows you much more breadth of, of selection. So the RCM has a pretty big syllabus. So you have a lot of choices on there. ABRSM doesn't really have such a big syllabus. That's fine, I guess. Um, it, but the thing about MTB is it kind of brings them together in a way where you have um, more agency of choice, which is really cool for people like me. I teach piano students all over the world. And it means that whether I have a student working with ABRSM material or RCM material, they can actually take the same test um, as opposed to having to try to conform one person to a different school and another person to a different school. It kind of um, is a way to bring people from disparate traditions all together. So the performance grades. Now, these are a departure from the practical grades, as I mentioned, because instead of a balanced uh, repertoire, uh, having three pieces and then doing technique, sight, and ear, you're just doing four to five performance pieces. And the idea is that you're mimicking a concert performance. And they give suggestions to you about, um, you have to prepare a concert program. This could be giving some verbal commentary as you play, not literally as you play, but maybe in between pieces, um, considering your entrance and exits and perhaps even performing in front of an audience in the recording itself to add to the experience, you know, considering how you're dressing, um, making sure the camera is placed appropriately and stuff like that. So there's a lot to consider when it um, comes with this, but they do in their, in their kind of, um, guidelines for these examinations do talk about the more choreographic aspects of things. Like how do you, um, like, are you going to talk to the audience or are you just going to entirely rely on a written program and, and how to do things like that? But again, the idea is to make sure you're demonstrating a wide variety of technical skills because if you're not doing scales and stuff like that, you have to prove to them that you, you still have those uh, technical abilities, even if you're not overtly demonstrating them. Just to give you a better sense of what the performance grades entail, you have the four or five pieces at a target duration that I mentioned, and you're going to be marked on things like your expression, your technique. It's basically the performative skills. Are you able to, you know, are you playing the right notes? Are you playing the right rhythm? But are you also playing with appropriate style based on the era? Are you playing with appropriate dynamics and other expressive elements such as the phrasing, um, obviously things like breath control and bow control don't matter as a piano player, but the point remains about, you know, being able to accurately play staccatos, legatos, accents, that kind of thing too. But in addition to all of that stuff, which you probably would have already assumed you were going to be assessed on, is the idea of stagecraft and a sense of performance. This assesses the presentation of the recital plus communication with the audience and other performers, which you won't have, um, engagement with the music and the listener, any verbal communication, posture, deportment, confidence, pace of delivery, etc. So that's a really interesting additional element for the performance grades. And then finally, the program. So this is the or the pieces you've been choosing for yourself. Is the is it balanced? Is it appropriate? Um, is it the right length? Is it varied? Um, how how is it being conveyed, etc. So those are the three components in which you will be assessed um, in in terms of your performance, um, your performance grades. So just as a little quick reference also, the target duration varies. It obviously increases the higher grades that you go because the pieces increase in length and complexity. You can be somewhere between like 30% on either side of this. So if you're, um, if you're five minutes is the recommendation for grade one, you could probably swing as much as say like even three and a half to six and a half minutes on either side. Uh, maybe even a little bit further than that, just assuming that you're not overdoing it. Um, and also just assuming that you're choosing enough music. So if you have a three minute grade one performance and you're only playing four pieces, maybe you need that fifth piece to round everything out. Or if you have a seven minute performance and three of those minutes are you talking, then maybe you need to scale back the talking a little bit so that your, your program is more balanced. We'll also briefly have a quick look at their marketing scheme. 
the exams are marked out of 100 with a pass mark of 60. Um, the being out of 100 thing, I, I think, is different from the RCM, I think. Uh, or is it the ABRSM? One or both of them, it's out of like 120 or 130 or something different. So this is easier marking. Um, where for the most part, your, um, your individual pieces are going to be worth 25 points. Um, however, it does depend. So I have the performance grades uh, table up here. If you're doing a regular practical grade, each one of your in individual pieces is going to be 20 to 25 marks total of the whole thing. So your three pieces are going to be 60 to 75 percent of your overall grade, and then the remaining is going to go towards technique, sight, and ear. With performance grades, it's it's marked differently. How accurate are you? How expressive are you? And is your technique good? Is going to make up 75 percent of your overall mark. That's a huge, huge chunk. And of course it makes sense, it's going to the most important musical elements, but also a decent chunk of uh, points are gonna be given for stagecraft as well as your program selections. Let's also talk briefly about how they expect you to record and upload and share your performance or your exam essentially for them to grade. You basically have to have an entirely unedited take. So if you're doing a five minute grade one exam, then start to finish, there should be no cuts. And they do make exceptions for like very small breaks, but everything has to be like time stamped uh, clearly so that like you're not having big spans of time in between performances. Just to simulate a real life environment as much as possible with it. Um, their app, which they recommend using, but you can also use the desktop version, um, it timestamps the recordings so that if you are editing, they're going to know and they're going to know like where those cuts are being made. So I think the safest bet is to just do it in one full take. And once you've completed that full take, you can choose to do it again. You can do a whole other examination if you want to record yourself again until you get something that you're pretty satisfied with that you feel like best represents your skills. And that's great because then you're ultimately going to be marked on what you're bringing to the table. You're not going to be marked on how your nerves sabotaged you on that particular day. So you're going to be probably saying some things verbally. You're going to be saying like your name and stuff like that. Um, you're going to need to perform all your pieces. You're going to go in order with the practical grades of doing technique and stuff like that afterwards. Uh, you also have a um, verification statement you'll need to read. I assume this is a security thing just to make sure that, um, you know, your recording is legit and everything like that. Uh, and then you upload it. So you scan or photograph the music so that they can see what music you were using. Um, ex when you go to a real exam, you always have to bring your books so that the examiners have a copy so they can see exactly what music you're referencing. Uh, then you essentially like sign it. Again, it's it's pretty easy theoretically to do through the app. I haven't gone through their app process, so I have no idea if it's a good app or not, but that's um, essentially how it goes. And you just need to verify you are who you are with some ID as well. So that's the, the gist of the process. They also encourage you to choose pieces for your repertoire selection that play to your strengths. And this is what, basically this is what performers do as well. Like you're not going to have a, maybe there's a performer who's just like super good at, at playing fast Bach music or something like that, but they're absolutely terrible with modern music like jazz or, or something. You wouldn't expect that performer to play to their weaknesses and, and develop a repertoire full of jazz music. They're going to, um, or maybe an, an example that's more relevant to, to you guys. Some people are really good at playing fast without a lot of effort, but other people really struggle playing fast. The, it takes a lot longer to get a piece fast. That person might be better off selecting pieces that are somewhere between like slow to maybe moderately fast at the top end. Whereas someone who's really technically skilled um, with, with fast passage work would be much more inclined to maybe not really select much in the slow range, maybe much more lean towards their strength of playing quickly. So I like that the MT MTB mentions this. I always want to say MTB. It's just the uh, shows my age a little bit there. Um, the good old, good old MTV. You should perceive your marks within a few weeks. Um, your marks are going to be given to you on a mark sheet, which includes comments on your piece as well as any technical elements. And then after four to six weeks, you're going to receive a certificate. They also need to certify your exam results. So there is a slight chance that the mark you're given by 
whichever examiner is examining you, it might change so ever so slightly because they have to pass through the board to make sure that um, it's basically like quality control. It's probably yeah. unlikely that your mark will change, but it is a possibility. Pricing for the MTB is more affordable than traditional exams. It ranges anywhere from 30 pounds, which is about 38 US dollars at this time, uh, 2022. Um, that's going to be the, the shortest, easiest exam. That's the preparatory level. Goes all the way up to about 74 pounds or more like 93 US dollars at the grade eight level. And then as you can see, it increases quite substantially from there. But diploma level exams are, are finicky to adjudicate. You need really um, sophisticated people to do. They're long and complicated. So in every single exam situation, the higher you get, the more it's it's going to cost. So um, this is, again, like uh, significantly reduced from, I think, I'm trying to recall how much a, a preparatory level RCM exam is. I think it's around 90 or or $100 Canadian. So it's about half the price overall um, because you're not needing to hire someone in person. Doing everything remotely is definitely a cost-effective way to do things. There are two diploma levels that you can get beyond um, grade eight when you're taking exams with the MTB. And that's the AMTB and the LMTB. So the AMTB is equivalent in difficulty to about a first year university um, undergrad music student. Um, and the LMTB is equivalent to someone who's basically, who's graduated, someone who's at that kind of bachelor's degree in music level. There are specific specifications, specific specifications basically saying the same thing twice. For those of you who are at that level, you can always check it out in more detail. Most of you watching this video aren't gonna be at the diploma level, so I just wanted to mention it briefly in, um, in passing here. To complete your musical education, I strongly recommend that you also do some kind of theory work. That might involve um, doing some formal theory exams or informal theory exams, um, doing some kinds of theory classes, even if you're not doing exams, but something to round out the performative aspect. Because if you're getting a bachelor's degree in music, you're not just practicing pieces, you're also studying history and harmony and all these things that gel your experience together. And I always emphasize that that aspect of it in my own teaching, especially in the later grades, we really start to um, like deep dive into history and harmony. Um, as I've gotten older and as I've done more and more teaching, I tend to bring those concepts earlier and earlier in, into the classroom where those used to not be concepts I would really discuss with people outside of grade nine, like pretty advanced level. This is now like even some harmony concepts we start talking about in grade one possibly even earlier as introductions, not like anything too heavy, heavy or intense. But uh, I think that's one thing that isn't in MTB's curricula that could be. Um, maybe they'll do that at a later point because this is, again, still a pretty new board. Or maybe they're just going to stick to uh, one thing. They're going to stick to performance and, and stuff like that, which I think is also still really great. The MTB exams are well worth exploring for those of you who want to be able to Go through the process of taking an exam, but you don't want to deal with the hassle of going to uh, basically going outside your home, whether it's near or far, um, dealing with the stress of it, dealing with the additional cost of it. So I think it's a fabulous option for piano teachers and piano students all around the world who might not necessarily have access to the same resources. It democratizes the experience of of learning music even further. So very excited to see how um, how this this essentially this new board this new music school um, develops over over the next years I will be experimenting with it with some of my students and we'll we'll see how it goes but I wanted to let you guys know that it exists I hope that you check it out I hope that um, you've learned something from today's episode and I'll catch up with you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching